1994, Porsche released the last iteration of the air-cooled 911. From 1994 to 1998, the 911 known as the 993. Here we have a wonderful example in Glacier White. These cars are becoming increasingly rare to find. Owners that have them, love them, and hold them tight and they're not letting go of them. But today we're gonna to be talking about two cars that are even more rare than a 993. And it's the iteration that wasn't developed at Weissach, they were developed in Fly, the motorsports division of the Porsche. Here we have this wonderful Carrera RS. And over here, we have the mighty Carrera RS Club Sport. We're gonna go through them, deep dive, and share some knowledge with you. Come with us. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Best of all, it's free to do so. We're back at At Speed Motors with Bob Miller. And Bob, I think for us to truly appreciate the two cars that we're gonna be looking at closely, we have to start with the 993 as sort of the model that we know here in the United States. Yeah, but with this, the 993, the last of the air-cooled, many people think the best. Porsche says that the 993 only had 20% carryover from its predecessor, the 964. So essentially, a completely new car. But as you said, to get to the RSs, we have to start here with the Carrera. Talk about being a new car. I think the factoid that I learned from Manny uh, Manny Alban, our technical director, was this car was supposed to follow the, uh, even, like the 964 wasn't going to happen, I think. It was supposed to go from like an 88 G-body 911 to a 993, but they kind of pushed this off into the future and they slotted the 964 in between. It's true. Uh, the 993 actually was conceived back in 1988 and it was going to follow the Carrera. Ferry was still alive at that point and he said, you know what? Not while I'm still alive. It was too different. It was too different. Too drastic. And if you look at the body panels, only the roof and the front bonnet are the same as every other 911 before it. Everything else on the 993, completely different. So let's take a quick look at what we will find that's on this car that's going to carry over to the RS and the RS Club Sport. Well, basically, the whole design of the car carries forward, but as with everything else Porsche did with the RS, it's just that much better. And so what they did is they completely redesigned the suspension on the 993. It now incorporates a subframe, which was very light, but most importantly, the rear multi-link suspension that was derived from the earlier 928. And the whole goal of that suspension was to try to eliminate as much as possible that tail happy nature of a 911. You put the engine behind the rear axle, you have a lot of weight bias there. And so you don't do things right, that tail's gonna wag around. So the whole goal of that suspension, multi-link, was to keep that tail as stable as possible. And again, as we said, came directly from the 928 and what's called the Visoc axle. So starting from the front of the car, um, we know we, we've seen this uh, recipe before where they've taken the street version of the 911 and created you know, an RS to a club sport version. I think in summary, you can say that most of the times this recipe, recipe includes the same gearbox and transmission, but then they lighten the car, they do uh, suspension upgrades, maybe even brake upgrades, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, so if we start from the front of this car here, are we looking at the same brakes and suspension uh, change that will be on the RS and the RS Club Sport? Yeah, I mean, basically Porsche, when they took the Carrera 2 and then they evolved to the Carrera RS, just about everything up front changed. The car up front was lowered 30 millimeters. It got much larger brakes, 322 millimeters in the front, 322 millimeters in the rear, um, derived from the 911 Turbo, by the way. And then the suspension itself, much stiffer springs, totally different Bilstein McPherson struts. Actually, those struts and that design came directly from the 964 Carrera RS that we've already talked about. When you move to the rear, 
again, much larger brakes, totally different spring rates. Um, the car in the rear, as opposed to this stock car, was dropped 40 millimeters. So again, taking the base car, but just making it better and better and better. Classic Porsche recipe. Now, for those of you that are observing this car very closely, you're probably noticing the ride height on this car is not a standard 993 ride height. It's true. 993s that came to the United States were basically for the Paris to Dakar rally. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so what we did with this one is we dropped it essentially to European ride height. Um, aesthetically, it makes the car, we think, much more attractive. And then also from a handling standpoint, essentially the car is designed for that. So this car handles wonderfully. So again, so that you can appreciate when we switch over to the other two cars, let's let you take a quick look at the interior of this stock 993. So from an interior standpoint and a gauge standpoint, cluster standpoint, etc., you'll recognize just about everything from a 964, but evolved. Still 911, still classic, still recognizable, but just a little bit different. So Bob, why don't we pull the latch and let people see the heart of this 993? So the engine is a development of the previous 964, um, different intake. This engine was bumped up from, in the United States, 247 to, in 95, 270. And then with the advent of the Varioram system, it got to 282 in 1996, 1997, and 1998. You can see it's recognizable, but again, different, a, an iteration of the previous. So from here, let's go to the front, or what we call the frunk, and look underneath, because as you move into the RS and the Club Sport versions, uh, underneath also changes quite a bit. So as a reference point, let's take a look at this Street 993. So fully carpeted, kind of standard, nothing surprising here. But what will we expect that's different here, Bob, in the other cars? Well, you're gonna see a pretty large size differential between this reservoir and what we run into with the RS and the Club Sport. Also, both of those are a four channel system. Uh, the cup car actually got a racing version of the ABS controller, but the RS and the Club Sport did not. So we'll recognize this, but it'll just be all stripped out. I mean, these are incredibly rare individually. Dime a let, dozen, let, dime a dozen. Let alone dude. having them together. <laughs> so let's, let's start with how rare are they? Well, in the world, there are 790 993 Carrera RSs in the entire world. Production was very, very low. What Porsche was doing is they were homologating their 993 RS. So between the Carrera RS and the Carrera RS Club Sport, there are a whopping 1,014 cars ever made. And none of them made it to the United States. No, the United States sadly had all kinds of restrictions that kept these cars only to the rest of the world. And for those that don't know, how did they finally end up in the United States? Well, back then you could still import the car theoretically, but you would have to convert everything that made it special into US spec. And so it wasn't worth doing. Then once we hit a certain mark with the EPA and the DOT, these cars are now allowed into the country without any changes. So we took a look at the Street 993s, gave everyone sort of a base. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with uh, the least wild of the two, right. the Carrera RS here. And maybe we start from the tail end and move forward since the way you've parked them. Sure. Well, visually, what you'll notice with the Carrera RS is instantly from the outside, you see a different rim the spectacular Speedline three-piece rim. Manny and I think, and I think Vu as well, one of the most beautiful of all rims that Porsche ever had commissioned. Iconic. Very iconic. Also with this car, there was an option for a much more aggressive aero package. It was called the Club Sport Aero Package. This car has it, 
which you'll notice with a very large uh, fixed rear tail. Um, beautiful design, very recognizable, and completely functional and adjustable, which is amazing. Now, the, the, the Carrera RSs um, that I've seen in books and such that didn't have this full on, this is a, this is a pretty wild body kit for it driving is. on the street. Between this body kit versus the standard Carrera RS body, right. are these more rare? Um, the motorsport or club sport package is significantly more rare on a standard Carrera RS. With the club sport that we're going to get to, it was standard. That was Stock. standard. Okay, gotcha. It came that way. Once we move into the engine, now we're looking at something completely different than what we just saw. This is an M64-20 engine. What Porsche did is they increased overall displacement from a 3.6 to a 3.8. And in 1995, when this car was actually produced, the standard 3.6 produced 270 horsepower, while this car produced 300 horsepower. So doesn't sound like much, but that's a 10% jump in power. And the accompanying torque was about the same. And then you're gonna start finding things where it's gonna be losing weight as well, right? It's true, but before we leave, one of the big things that Porsche did to get some of that power was the Vario Ram system. Um, that showed up on the streetcars in 1996, but in the RS, it could be seen in 1995, and then also 1996. The exhaust system was basically motorsport derived with a high flow cat system, just letting out air more easily for that engine to breathe. And so helped overall power and torque. And good sound. And good sound. Anything, uh, the deck lid is a standard seal, anything lightweight back here? This is a lot of weight. It is a lot of weight in relative terms, but remember the standard Carrera had a deploying wing. Oh, with yeah, motors with, and such. Right, with a okay. motor and all that mess. I'll bet you if you weigh the two, they're pretty darn close, and now you have all this <laughs> downforce attached. Gotcha. Continuing forward, what Porsche did, and another reason we didn't get these cars, they had thin glass in the rear, thin glass on the side, thin glass all the way around, including the front windshield, which, of course, Department of Transportation would never let in back then. And no sunroof. No sunroof. Couldn't even get a sunroof on the RSs. This car was originally from Japan, which actually is wonderful because a lot of the Japanese ordered cars came with air conditioning, one of the options for a Carrera RS and something that makes the car usable all the time, no matter the weather. Now, looking inside, I noticed the beautiful carpet kit. I don't know if Damon can focus on, but it actually says Carrera RS across the back there. And uh, as you're looking in that direction, you can't help but notice the uh, white painted uh, seat backs. Also a nice little touch. Right, these are sport hardback seats, uh, painted body color. If you remember when we did the 73 RS evaluation, this was the first time you saw a straight body panel or a straight door panel here that got rid of all the map pockets, etc. This has that same door panel style, straight, no map pockets, weight savings, just utilitarian. But you do have, you do have a stereo, so a little bit of creature comforts in this one still. It's true. One of the other options was a radio, and sure enough, this car does not have a radio, but has speakers, which yes. is wonderfully brilliant. And we noticed this little piece here that we haven't seen before in other door poles. Just an accoutrement, I believe, primarily from the Japanese market, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but sure does make the door pole easier to use. And being in 1995, uh, if the car was a US spec car, we normally have sort of a bulky steering wheel, whereas these cars have these beautiful steering wheels here. It's true. We have a motorsport inspired almost Momo-esque steering wheel. You'll notice it does not have an airbag. Um, the other side airbag as well, generally removed. Another reason it couldn't come to the United States. Back to these seats, going from 
you know, standard full leather powered two or three motors underneath. These are fixed and you're probably losing a couple hundred pounds by going with these seats. Yeah, these uh, VU are completely manual. Um, you cannot adjust the rake at all. You can move them forward and backward, but somehow in its absolute brilliance, Porsche made a seat that is immensely comfortable without having to do all those changes. Once you get in them, because getting in and out of them, this high area is a little bit tough to get over, right? It's true. It's a little bit of an acrobatic jump in, but um, once you're in, it's once you're in, man, you're in. You're locked in. Let's keep moving forward because you'll notice that all the gauges and everything is standard. Remember, Porsche is, in relative terms, a very small manufacturer, so it's not going to make immense changes for a production car. And you see all the same gauges you just saw in that Carrera 2. Moving forward, now we're going to start to see some changes. To the bonnet, we go, and right away, Vu's going to notice Ooh. the weight differential. Yes. This bonnet is all aluminum. You can notice that they have, have no shocks to raise the hood. And there's only one way to keep that up. And that's a motorsport inspired, just single aluminum dowel. That makes me nervous to use it because if you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, inside here, again, most of the carpet removed. There's a very small carpet set. There's also a central kill switch that was integrated into these cars as standard. You see a cross brace here, again, a standard accoutrement. But luckily, Manny showed us, and you'll notice now, that that brake reservoir is significantly larger than the street reservoir. And notice the top of the shocks, that's unique to this car. It is, yeah, these, these shock systems, again, a, a cast, almost a monoball style upper strut mount. Now, how about the tank? Were the tanks in these cars larger than the standard 993? Yeah, the standard 993 uh, actually got a slightly smaller tank than the 964 at about 19 gallons. These, I believe, are just slightly larger for a longer range. Now, you had pointed out a feature that was introduced in the 993 or these little levers. It's true. If everybody remembers the old days when you had to take yep. a light out. A trim ring had to be removed right. with one screw at the bottom. Yeah. Right. And then you had Phillips screws kind of holding everything together and you'd have to oh my finagle gosh. them in. And then since the beginning of time, you had to find this little piece of metal at the top to try to get that darn light to hold in could take you half an hour to an hour to get the darn thing to hold and poop, it would pop right up. All of a sudden with the 993, we push a little plastic piece here, pull a little lever and the whole and darn light so pull, can slide completely out. And this is just like the modern day Porsches. You, my, my 996, a Cayenne, all modern Porsches have this guide system. Right. Now you can pull the headlights much easier. You can pull it out, push it in. One downside is this is all one giant sealed component. So unfortunately, a little more expensive than a single ball. Right, exactly. All right, so anything else about the Carrera RS before we move over to the Club Sport? Well, we have our standard street-based G50 transmission here, but the RS and the Club Sport get different gearing than the standard C2 that we just talked about. So we have a different engine, we have a different transmission with different gearing, we have very recognizable rims in the speed lines, we have the 911 turbo inspired braking system, we have the Bilstein McPherson struts and higher level springs, actually these Bilsteins and the rear shocks are directly from the 964 RS, so a real carryover. Um, you have the car lower that we talked about, 30 millimeters up front, 40 millimeters in the back, and now you have the car lighter. So classic Porsche, the RS is an iteration, just that much better. All right, so let's move over to the 911 Carrera RS Club Sport. And since you parked it in this position, we might as well start with the front. Okay, now I can't emphasize enough the uber rareness 
of this car. 224 units worldwide. Um, very, very few options. You'll notice the Club Sport spoiler system up front. That's standard on this car. We have the same aluminum, which auto opens, aluminum hood that we did on the RS. We now have basically no carpeting, the same cross member, the same larger reservoir, but now our kill switch is actually wired up so it's actually usable from inside the cockpit. You can pull on that, there is a wire, and the whole thing shuts down, just like a race car. This is as close as you can get, literally, in 1995 and 1996, to a factory race car driving around on the street. And this thing was street legal. So inside the boot, Everything's familiar to you. It's the same size tank as the Carrera RS, but just stripped out even more. So Porsche is trying now to save ounce after ounce after ounce on this car. And less stuff to take out if you need to service. Like you're looking at all the reservoirs are, the relays are right. all accessible. Everything's right in front of you. And we also have those amazing quick pop 993 headlights. Now this car's uh, power steering or no power steering? Power steering in the RS and the Club Sport. Once you got to the cup car, no power steering. And how about the brakes? Brakes are also vacuum assisted all the way up to and including the factory cup car. The amazing thing was once you got from the cup car to the RSR, they put the power steering back in because the RSR was really more of a longer race style um, machine. So they wanted that help for the driver. Now in some of the, I guess, race iterations of other cars, they've chosen to use a C4 chassis. Um, is this a C4 chassis or is this a C2 chassis? No, amazingly, with the Carrera RS and the Club Sport and the 993 Cup, they used the C2 chassis. And the reason for that were twofold. One was weight. The other, amazingly, was aerodynamics. Oh, really? The C4 was a bigger piece of sail to move through the air. And as we walk past the beautiful speed lines that we spoke of earlier, the brakes on this car, is it the same as a street car? Well, and again, remember, this is actually a street car. The Club Sport was a street car. Um, the brakes are the same as the Carrera RS Basic, and the Club Sport being sort of the next iteration, but still use the same braking system. I know you're saying it's a street car, but it's so hard to believe because if you walk around to look at this interior, it is all business. Like, I don't know how you would really be able to drive this on the street. This thing is absolutely all business, but here's the amazing thing. One of the options you could get in both a Carrera RS and an RS Club Sport was air conditioning. And this is originally a Japanese car, very common for the Japanese to order just about every option you could get in a car. And sure enough, this Japanese Club Sport, one of 224 in the world, has factory air conditioning. If Damon comes in, you can even see there's interior factory lighting when the door is open. So that's so that when you have the camera pointed at your feet <laughs> to record your footwork, you have enough lighting. That's right. Now, a couple real small basic changes, and then we'll talk about this integrated matter cage that was put in by Motorsport. Remember I said that that kill switch was activated from inside the car by a cable? Well, here is that kill switch activation knob. And you just yank it and the whole car shuts down, just like a race car should. You see the same steering wheel that was in our street sort of basic Carrera RS, but now we've changed completely to motorsport, pure business, factory, hardback seats. I also noticed there were some weight savings in the door as I opened it and found out that, you know, probably all the weight savings moving from a electric powered window to now a manual crank window. Right. Um, Basically, we have a crank here, so no electric motor. Also, 
all of our adjustment with our rear view side mirrors completely manual. So eliminating those little motors and all of the factory electronics and wiring that go to them. All the carpet has been removed, especially in the back. You can just see it's all white back there now. It is. Let's talk now about what we see integrated into the entire car. And that is a welded in completely integrated factory matter cage. What that does to the chassis is it completely stiffens and makes torsionally much more rigid that chassis. Every race car in the world loves an integrated welded in cage because it makes that chassis as strong as possible. Not only does it help with racing, but it's immensely safe in any type of impact or a crash. So what's interesting is in Europe, a car like this with an integrated roll bar can be delivered to the public, uh, uh, you know, as, as they're buying a car from a dealership. But that's probably one of the many things that kept this car from coming into the United States. Uh, yeah, the litany of things that kept it out of the United States. But imagine, and we'll reiterate this again, this is a street legal car in every other country of the world, except for the United States back in 1995. Now with the carpets removed, underneath the carpet, sound deadening obviously isn't in there. You'll take us on a ride later, but when you're driving the two, is the volume of you know noise and, and engine sounds, is it that much more amplified in this car? Um, it is, and, and I call it visceral. I mean, this car is immensely visceral. You hear everything, you feel everything. The Carrera RS Basic, it had less sound deadening than the street car. Once you got to the Club Sport, there's zero sound deadening. They removed everything. So again, what Porsche is trying to do is even lighter. Now the problem is you integrate a factory roll cage into this chassis, well now you've added weight. And so what Porsche tried to do was they eliminated all this other weight to try to make up for that matter roll cage. And they actually did a pretty good job. The Club Sport is ever so slightly lighter than its Carrera RS cousin. And if you take a close look, wherever this was integrated, there was probably a matching plastic trim piece in the other cars that didn't make it back onto this car, right? So you added some weight, you take away, the vents here are mm -hmm. gone. There's no headliner, no, no material. There's only one uh, visor right? as opposed to because two. Because if so you're in a race car, who's going to be with you? They can wear sunglasses. That's They're right. sitting on, the, on that side. All right, so the same pull for the engine lid on all the cars. Let's take a look at the back. So this should look familiar to us. We have the same M6420 engine and the same Vario Ram system. We have a little bit of water here because we just cleaned the car. Um, the same power output. So we're still at 300 horsepower, just like our basic RS cousin. And amazingly, these, we love seeing these in a almost factory race car, you have air conditioning. So it makes the car usable all the time. So between the engines of the two cars, fairly the same. Yes, almost identical. Um, exhaust systems, nearly identical. But remember, even as a, a pseudo factory race car for the street, Porsche is still environmentally conscious. So they're running catalytic converters, high flow cats, but still cats. So along the same lines of the, the, the club sport theme of using a fairly street engine, street transmission, maintenance on this car is probably similar to a street 993. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, the, the 993 was immensely reliable, as are these cars. Carrera RS's, club sports, basically just a little bit more power, same basic design, same, essentially the same engine same pieces, very low maintenance. Well, I think that's enough talk about these cars. Bob is gonna actually give us a treat and take you for a ride in both cars so you can get the full impression of what it's like to drive a 911, 993 Carrera RS. As on well the street. As on the street. And he's also gonna take the Club Sport out on the street. So let's do it. Let's do it.
great. Now we're going to take out a basic, I say that in quotes, Carrera RS. We just filled up a little bit of fuel, standard gas, which is great. And we'll see what this baby can do. First thing you notice about the RS is how unbelievably responsive it is. This one I've already allowed to warm up, so we can pretty much jump on it at this point. Um, great sounds, great feel, everything Porsche. First thing we're going to test out will be the difference between this 3.8 and the standard Carrera 2's 3.6. Then you add in a little bit of lightness less weight and we should really feel the difference so let's see wow okay this baby is ready to go to a racetrack it's been a long time since I've been in a 993 Carrera RS. I had forgotten how amazingly responsive and sophisticated they feel in comparison to the 964. The six-speed gearbox really condenses all of the gears so that the engine can stay in its power band almost all the time. One of the differences we'll feel with this car is the relative quietness of the car. We've got both windows down. So maybe what I'll do is put those up and you can really get a sense for what the car is like on the street. Forgot. These are electric windows. All right, there we go. That's the Carrera RS on the street. Both windows up. Easy, Bob, easy. Car really changes its tone somewhere around 5,800 RPM. Um, must be the Vario Ram system really kicking in full bore. It's, there's an amazing difference right there. Red line on the Carrera RS 3.8 starts at 6,800. Now we're in top gear, sixth gear. Car very, very stable, easy to drive. If there's ever so slight push up front brakes of course with all Porsches fabulous car again first thing we feel is the lightness the responsiveness of the car up front ever so slight thought of moving left or right and the car responds just no delay on this. Really pretty amazing. 
you have to remember this is a street car. This was a street legal car in every country except for the United States. With a push of a button, air conditioning, unbelievable. All right, let's take this on some relative back roads and see how she responds there. I love the fact that Porsche was homologating this car for its 993 RSR race car. Once I got to a thousand units, in this case, a thousand fourteen. Carrera RS's, they just stopped. Okay, we're done. Because really our goal is we want to homologate that 993 RS. Just for kicks, let's try the air conditioner. This car has 65,000 original kilometers on it. That's about 38,000 miles. So not a lot of time on it. And you can really feel that. The car is super quiet in terms of any creaks or groans or anything like that. A fabulous example of a normal Carrera RS. One of the things you look at if you're pushing a car, especially, all the gauges. How's the car responding? How's the machine doing? And in this case, as with every Porsche, everything is exactly where it should be. Oil pressure is perfect. Oil temperature is perfect nothing out of sorts even when you're pushing the car amazing now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this car for its cousin the 993 Carrera RS Club Sport so we'll see what that one's like in comparison okay everybody we just left the normal Carrera RS, 993 Carrera RS, and now we are in the Club Sport version. First thing you notice going five miles an hour is the visceral nature of this car. You hear everything. There's no sound deadening at all. And, uh, Boy, this is as close as it gets to a race car on the street. We've got the same chassis under us, but just feels different right away. There's no sound deadening in this car. I know the gearing is the same, but it just feels quicker. So the first factory race car I ever bought from Porsche was one of the remaining 993 Cup cars in 1998. There were six cars left sitting around when Porsche factory teams moved to the 996 chassis. So I got the car with seven kilometers on it. Only Jurgen Barth and I had ever driven it at that point. And I have to tell you, this is reminiscent for sure of that car. I know I'm on the street and I know this is a street car, but it sure doesn't feel like it. In 
constant differences. The street, sort of normal RS, feels a little softer. The Club Sport did use upgraded springs, so this car feels just absolutely planted to the ground. Unbelievable cars these are. Everything about this car is just more. I mean, it's, you're just so connected to it. which it is, but man is it music to my ears. Can't say too much more about the car other than I absolutely love it. It is, this is just amazing. Completely responsive, totally visceral, amazingly predictable, all the right sounds. Gear ratios just feel perfect. Now let's take it on uh, some slight back roads. Again, this is about as close as it has ever gotten for me to a 993 Cup car, which I spent a lot of time in. This car is phenomenal. All that slight understeer that I felt at higher speeds with the basic RS, all gone with this car could be the way the car is aligned, but not even a hint of higher speed understeer. The amazing thing is, is here we are at 35 miles an hour, and the car is just as perfect to drive as it was at 110 miles an hour. I can't tell you any more than I already am in terms of you gotta you gotta own one or try one or take a ride in one have a ride in one whatever you can try to get in one of these cars again that's the 993 RS Club Sport amazing Okay, that's the end of our drive. I've said it a million times on this drive, but I'll say it again. This car is absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, the integration of the cage, the lighter um, weight, the visceral nature, uh, everything about this car just takes that further step from a normal, and I say normal, 993 Carrera RS to a, this car, which is a uh, 993 Carrera RS Club Sport. Just for kicks, let's just, heck, we'll just try the air conditioner in a, in a factory race car for the street. Absolutely incredible. Okay, everybody, until next time, see you again.